Hey, what's up guys? It's Tech Summer talking to you here. And today, I want to review the Dell UltraSharp display. This display behind me is a 27-inch 4K 60 capable display with HDR10. And this panel is beautiful. It's incredible. It's very good for what it was priced on and for the price that I paid. Of course, it's not as good as my mini LED MacBook Pro, but again, it's a $400 display. While MacBook Pro has a mini LED display and cost me around $3,500. So this is the perfect companion for my MacBook Pro because it's a bigger display. It's 27 inch, the same size as the bigger iMac. And so I can use this MacBook Pro when I'm at home in a setup, docked it and use this display for my companion display when editing or watching movies. It's a bigger screen and it helps me do a lot of stuff. And so in this video, I wanna review it and tell you if it's worth it to get an external display for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And spoiler alert, it isn't. So before we go into this review, roll the intro. The Dell Sharp S2722QC is this display right here. This display is a 4K 60 HDR10 capable display. It's beautiful, it's P3 color gamut. I think it's 99% sRGB. So it's quite good, even for editing photos, editing videos, it's very reliable. The colors are crisp, beautiful. They are not very off and far off as the MacBook Pro because it's not a mini LED display, it's an IPS panel. So, I mean, it's not as good as a mini LED display from Apple to edit videos, but it has a refresh rate of 24, 25, and I think it's 29, 30 and 60 frames per second and 59. So you can move around those refresh rates if you wanna edit a 24 per frames per second video or a 30 frames per second video or even a 60 frames per second video. It supports all of those refresh rates. It's not a high refresh rate display, so it doesn't have 120 Hertz like you normally see on other displays, mainly the gaming displays, but those are not 4K, are not HDR10 and are not sRGB capable, like 99% fidelity. So this display was purposely bought to edit videos and edit photos, the thing that I do the most for this channel. Of course, I could do it mainly on my MacBook Pro. And let me tell you, so I've been using this display for almost a week now, and by experience, I can tell you that I'm editing on my MacBook Pro, not on this display. So what happened was, when I started editing on this display, I noticed just a little bit of loss in terms of quality in the image. So I went back to my Mac Pro because that mini LED display is just insanely good. So good actually that I'm considering returning this display because it's not necessary. So this display is kind of um, a luxury because it's not needed when you have a 16 inch Mac Pro like this one, for example, this 16 inch display is incredible, crisp, very, very bright, like very, very bright, even brighter than the, that display there. It's very, very bright. It's crisp, the colors are incredible. The blacks are real blacks because of mini LED. It has a little bit of blooming. You notice it when you are in a very dark room with the, the screen on maximum brightness. But again, who cares about that? This is almost an older display without the OLED counterparts, which are the burning. So this laptop display is incredible. I love it so much, so much, so much that I can tell you that I'm maybe considering returning that 27 inch display, although I like it a lot. It helps me move around, have more space and breathe. The 16 inch real estate on this MacBook Pro is so good. It's actually big enough for me to work and to use to watch movies like football, TV, everything. This 16 inch display is big, big enough for me. I wouldn't thought this 16 inch display would be big enough. That's why I ordered the 27 inch. But now that I've used it for almost a week, I can tell you that I don't think it was worth it and even though it was cheap, $400 for this amazing display, which is still very good and I still recommend it for a lot of you, I wouldn't pay it again. And again, I'm telling you, the 16 inch display is far more than enough for you and of course it's 120 hertz ProMotion capable and that one isn't. So when I'm using both side by side, I get mad because like that one is 120 hertz and then I move the mouse around and that one isn't and so it gets me confused and I don't like it, let me tell you, I don't like it, I don't like it at all, and I prefer the ProMotion display on that display, I prefer the color accuracy on my mini LED display on MacBook Pro, and the biggest factor for me to consider returning this display is the speakers. I don't have any good pair of speakers and external speakers to connect to my display, and so what happens is 
I pair my MacBook Pro speakers and I turn them on. So the sound comes from my right because you can see that my setup, I have the MacBook there and the display there. So when I turn my sound up, the sound comes from that side, not from the display. And it sounds weird and it's very weird. Take a listen. <laughs> If I put the MacBook in front of the display, I simply cannot watch it because it covers up the screen. So I don't have a choice. Either I have my sound coming from just my right side or I have my image covered up to have my sound coming from the front. And I have an iPod mini, but that doesn't work as a stereo pair because I don't have two iPod minis. So I don't have any good speakers from this display. Of course, it has built-in speakers, but th those speakers suck. Take a listen. See, those are really bad. But if you are thinking that they are not and they are eh, merely good, listen to my MacBook speakers and then have a comparison. And think why I'm considering returning this display just for this alone. Take a listen. speakers on the Dell Ultrasharp S2722 suck. They are very bad, they are very teeny, they don't play it loud enough, they don't have any enough volume, bass, everything. They are really really bad, they're just like for some, sometimes when you don't have an external speaker you need to really hear something because they are really really bad. I wouldn't use them in any situation and so I just turn them off and I use my MacBook speakers. So what happens is when I use my MacBook speakers, either I put my AirPods on and turn off the spatial audio and use them with the external display. So I have my sound coming from the front and using the display. But again, my AirPods Pro audio is not as good as my MacBook speakers. So again, there's a loss in quality there. Of course, I have tried to use the HomePod mini, but one HomePod mini doesn't have stereo speakers. And so again, my experience is downgraded. This is the biggest letdown for me, not having external speakers. I don't have any more money to spend. I don't want to spend any more, one more buck either on this setup. And so, I mean, this display was good, but I forgot about that detail of the speakers. It's not a display's fault. Remind yourself that when you are buying this display, you have to buy external speakers and good ones or that, or you recur to your Mac speakers and if you have it dock, then you, you, you don't have any solution. You will have to buy an external display Again, because the MacBook, when it's docked, you have to close the lid and you just can't hear the speakers. So the speakers are the biggest downside of this display. But there's a lot of more things to this display than just the speakers and the panel. The menu, it's very intuitive to use. You have some buttons at the down right corner where you can click and you, you use the different menus. For example, you can see here, if I click this button, I access the menu, and then I click, click it right, left, up and down. and select the menu option that I want. I can turn up the brightness, I can turn up all of the settings like 
HDR settings, I can turn on all of that and it's pretty useful if you want to change some settings on this display because there's no remote. Of course, you can do that like externally on the MacBook settings, but you cannot personalize it as you want on this display. It's pretty good with the standard uh, color calibration that it comes on. But if you want to do more adjustments, you have to go into the settings menu there with the buttons. There's no, of course, remote on this display because it's a display, not a TV. In terms of I.O., it has a display port. It has two HDMI ports, no USB-C on this model, but you can buy a model with USB-C. It's a little bit more expensive. It has, of course, power port. It doesn't have a USB-C and that's a bummer because I could just power my MacBook with that cable. But now that my 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro features HDMI 2.0, that's like no problem for me right now. I just connect it via HDMI and I'm so happy that Apple has brought HDMI back. Finally, we have a competent port so I can use my external display and not take my other Thunderbolt 4 ports used. So it's a downgrade and an upgrade at the same time. So it stays at the same level. Of course, I didn't want to spend the extra money because I don't have the extra money to buy that USB-C model. This display can also rotate 360 degrees to the left and to the right. It can go up and down as you wish. And you can rotate it to forward or backwards if you want to incline it upwards or downwards. This again is very cheap. Like I told you, it just costs around 400 bucks. And the ex unboxing experience was actually eh, pretty good. The box came in a rough shape, let me tell you. And it had a display on it. It was a very simple box with just the display, some cables and cardboard. So not a lot to this unboxing experience. But if you want to know how it looked and how it was, eh, mediocre. So the thing is, this display is for a lot of people, but it's not for people that use a 16-inch MacBook Pro. Because in my opinion, the 16-inch MacBook Pro is a big enough display. And even though you surely want a bigger display, after some time, you will realize that you can find a good display for a good price, and you can find as good as a display with ProMotion for a good price. And so you end up just using your 16-inch MacBook Pro and forgetting about your external display. And even though that external display was very cheap, it was a waste of money because you don't use it. So in my opinion, who should buy an external display for your M1 MacBook Pro or M1 Pro MacBook Pro or M1 Mac Mini? Well, those that I told you. This 14-inch MacBook Pro is a great computer to have with an external display because the 14-inch size is not as good and as big as the 16-inch size. So you don't have an, as big as a real estate of screen and so you need a bigger display and you are not as drawn to that 14 inch display like you are for a 16 inch. The difference is still very big. Although two inches, you might be thinking, oh, that's, that's a little, that's not enough. It makes a lot of difference, trust me. And so the 14 inch, it makes sense to have an external display to dock it and to build a PC setup just to connect to your MacBook. But in my opinion, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, it's not worth it to buy an external display. The display is big enough. And so I don't recommend you even though the deal may sound very good, I don't recommend you getting an external display for the 16 inch just because of the fact that one, you will have to spend more money on speakers. Two, you won't find a ProMotion capable display like the 16 inch MacBook Pro and you won't find an as good of a quality of a display with the blacks and the mini LED technology. And all of that, even if you find one, it will be very, very, very expensive. Even Apple's most expensive display, which is the Pro Display XDR that costs $6,000 with the stand, it doesn't have promotion. It has mini LED technology, but it doesn't have promotion. So we'll have to wait. And I'm very, very, very happy to see that Apple is rumored to be working on a cheaper external display, which has 120 Hertz and mini LED technology. Of course, it's also rumored that mini LED technology will come to the iMac with the M1 Max chip, with the M1 Pro and in a 27 inch size. So at around March timeline, we might see the iMac Pro. This iMac Pro will feature the mini LED display with ProMotion. So the best external display and big display that Apple will produce ever. And I'm very excited for that. I will have a video talking about the M1 Pro and M1 Max iMac Pro in the coming days. But for this video, I'll just tell you that I'm excited for this 120 Hertz ProMotion 27 inch panel that is coming with this iMac Pro. So I can't wait for that. But again, coming back to this external display, the Dell Sharp, 
Will I recommend you? Yes. If you have a M1 Mac Mini and you don't want to spend a lot of money on an external display, you have a 14 inch MacBook Pro and you need a bigger screen size to work on on your desk and if you are using an older M1 MacBook Air or M1 MacBook Pro. But if you have a 16 inch M1 Pro or M1 Max MacBook Pro, it doesn't matter, I don't recommend you getting an external display. The display is big enough that you will feel comfortable using it and it's good enough that you won't find any better displays out there. So, what are your opinions? Will you buy an external display? Did you like my Dell Sharp? And let me tell you, I will return it, I'm sad for it, but I think it's the right decision to do. And in my opinion, you shouldn't buy an external display for a 16 inch MacBook Pro. But what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, those social networks need to grow. My YouTube channel is growing. Thank you. This is Thanks for talking to you here. Bye.